but we get through. Uh, it was great, and I got that tab now. Uh, I immediately roll into a deployment. Um, so we're third brigade, third ID there at uh, Benning. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go into a deployment with, but I'm going to get attached to fourth ID. Or I'm sorry, fourth brigade, third ID. And so I don't okay. even get to go with my guys. But right before I head out the door, Q comes in. He was like, "Hey, uh, I know you were interested in coming over and applying to come over with us. Like, where's your packet?" Like, yeah, I don't, I don't have it done. I don't have any deployments. I don't have any experience. Nothing. Uh, you know. I had come from, you know, GRTC as a fire marker, not even as an OC. And then I was a group weenie, you know, and I got some <laughs> right. CACRL experience and that's it. Um, I had never run a range before. Like somebody had always taken care of stuff and you just kind of hand you the mic when it's your turn to do cast. Mm-hmm. And so now I got cues like, hey, where's your package? Like, let me go get some experience. He's like, uh, I'm not asking. Just give me what you got. Right. Okay. So I give him an incomplete package and I, uh, I head off to... Head off to Iraq with uh, 4th Brigade, 3rd ID, and they're going to put me at division. And so Eddie Morales was the NCIC at division, um, and he's the guy that when Matty Green got me a slot in Ranger School, we had to call Savannah, uh, Stuart. He's the one that answers the phone and says, hey, if he can get a spot, I'll support it. So nice. like, he's a prior <laughs> Ranger Tech P. So, uh, you know, now I just made it through Ranger School. Um, he, you know, so it was good. So he's there, and my best friend in the world's down at Fava Falcon. It's just south of the green zone there in um, – in Iraq, uh, Jason Rutledge, he's with 3-3 ACR, they're on Falcon, there's three battalions on the FOB, and he's the only JTAC, and so he waits for me to get in country and gives uh, Eddie Morales a call, and he's like, hey, I need another JTAC, by the way, Ross and I work well together. Nice. Well, I mean, Eddie Eddie just saw that, you know, he, I just came back from major school, so he's, he's probably pretty happy with me, no problem, and I, and I head down to work with, uh, it's a 184 um, National Guard. Air okay. Assault National Guard, and they'd been in country for six months before, and they didn't have a JTAC. Jeez. Rutledge was trying to cover down. Um, they didn't have an FSO. Uh, their FSO uh, wasn't a fire support officer. He was just some random officer that had commissioned in there. Their FSO in CIC, I can't really say. I mean, I don't even remember the guy, and I worked with yeah. him for six. You know, I worked fires for six months, but they were getting just tore apart. I mean, it was the morale was incredibly low. Their yeah. wall of casualties uh, there in their talk was just the entire hallway long. Jeez. Um, their battalion commander had been fired for shenanigans of what his security platoon up in the green zone was like charging uh, uh, protection money and they got caught. Um, there's, yeah. Oh yeah. God. So, uh, and then there was some um, firearm discharge during tactical questioning, questioning that, you know, just some bad stuff. And so he'd gotten fired and uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Wood from um, third ID was running the, running the business. And he had a, uh, an active duty battle captain there in the talk. So I get in and I meet, um, I meet my romad. It's a guy named Levi Bates. So Levi is, a uh, incredibly experienced romad. He was in, I mean, he was with third ID when they took Iraq, like oh, okay. w- when they invaded. Right. So here I am, I've never done anything except a silly school. Um, and I'm the JTAC and, you know, and I got this romad. And so we go out on our first patrol with the battalion. Um, and I, it's not a battalion size mission, but we've got our OPs kind of everywhere. And so as we're rolling, we're going to go see this OP and uh, we start getting the calls. They're under fire, right? They're, t- they're taking mortar fire. And this is pretty standard. Um, I'd kind of been briefed a little bit. So I, I, you know, I could picture where it was and I could picture where they were taking fire because I knew there's an island that sits right on the boundary of, of the, uh, I can't remember if it's a division boundary or brigade boundary, but I think it was the division boundaries is the river right there south of Baghdad. Yeah. And there's an island on the river. So you can imagine who owns the island. Like who's who's got freedom of fires there underneath a the boundary line. So there's a nice defilade on the island. So there was two tanks, so two Abrams, uh, you know, 40 millimeter grenade launchers, cruiser weapons, snipers, like everything's on this OP, but nobody can get after you know, these teams that are sneaking onto the island and sitting behind the death and just lobbing mortars. Uh-huh. So we start getting these calls. So we stop, we get out like, Hey, like, what are we going to do? And then like, as we're talking about it, uh, we'll call it sniper fire. Cause it was individual fire, right? Like, it could have sure. been some asshole with an AK to shoot once or twice at us, but it kept us pinned down cause it was pretty continuous. And so, um, we're going to get some casts on it. And like, I've never controlled in combat. You know, I've never really controlled by myself outside of a range. I've always had my NCOs there. Um, and I'm turning to, uh, God, this had to have been later then. Yeah, because I didn't control anything with Levi, but I got Mike Macias as a role model now. And so oh, okay. I'm turning to Mike, I'm like, give me some cast. And he was like, okay, okay, okay. And he's like, a little bit later, he goes, Sergeant Robinson, what do you want? I was like, cast, Mike, get on Jarn and give me some cast. And so I'm working, and I'm working with the commander and everything. And so he asked me again, Sergeant Robinson, what do you want? I was like, Mike, seriously, give me some fucking cast. Like, do your job is what I want at this point. He goes, <laughs> right. you don't understand. Chariot Direct is on the Jarn. And he wants to know exactly what you want. So, like, I've got uh, 
it was a chariot direct either the division commander or you know the uh the chops at the AO, at the aoc I, I don't know who it was but yeah must have been the division commander was like what do you want so i was like yeah, yeah. man it'd be really sweet if i got some f-18s with laser mavs and some apaches delays sure enough they show up uh you know <laughs> so my first my first cast drop was with laser mavs um guided in by apaches nice uh, and they hit a five-man team two of them don't go anywhere three of them like pop up and start to run the apaches take out one you know because I, I allow them to follow up mm -hmm. um and then the guys that have been getting mortared for months uh, on that OP, we're watching the whole thing go down, and those guys just, you know, unmask themselves, to, you know, to two Abrams and, you know, however many cruisers they got set up on this fortress of theirs. So it's just nuts, and they took them all out. So that was kind of, uh, you know, my first introduction to to kinetic operations with this battalion, and they were yeah, pretty yeah. happy with me. But so uh, prior to all that, like I'm working with uh, uh, Levi Bates, and I got my notes. Like uh, that that young man was the bravest person I'd ever I've ever met, like hands down. So, I mean, he's super quiet. He doesn't talk much. Um, some other guys kind of rotated in and out of our fob visiting us that knew him and kind of knew what he'd been through and in that initial push into um, into Iraq. And I'm not going to tell his story or anything, but it was it's uh, it's got some mental fortitude to keep doing what he what he was doing. And I never really noticed um, anything untoward. So, like. Uh, you know, he's got some ticks, right? Some very, very obvious ticks, and they're nothing big, uh, nothing mm -hmm. that affects who he is at all. But like, yeah, you can see, like, he just is, he constantly does. But he would ask me these, this just one question: Do we need to leave the wire on this one? Every time he would ask me that, and I'd say, "Yep, we got, it. we we do." You know, I was I was the only JTAC for the entire battalion, and so, and I was bouncing. Do I need to stay in the talk or do I need to go? Right. And as soon as I'd say yes, we do, he'd be like, "Yep, okay, okay." And then that's all he'd say, and we'd go. So I think on my very first trip outside the wire, I think, you know, I'm sorry, my timeline's kind of getting up most, but I do know my first trip outside the wire. He's driving, we're in this convoy, and we're going like you just hear about, you know, this is, this is 2005, yeah. So this is 2005 in Iraq, and so IEDs are well known. And sure. we, there's three holes in the road, half in, half in the uh, asphalt, half in the dirt up ahead of me. So I'm looking at them as, as they go by. And in the middle one, there's a green wrapped box with plastic. Uh, I'm sorry, green plastic wrapped box with tape kind of over it. So you know, immediately up on COVID, I'm like, hey, IED, IED, three holes in the center, uh, you know, on the right side of the road, stay away. And so that now breaks contact with the convoy. We're on one side, they're on the other. I got the commander up there in the front with me. We're on the far side of the IED and it doesn't blow up. And the rest of the convoy is on the back side, but you know, they're asking me, hey, what's the deal? I'm like, hey, this is what it, this is what it was. Like somehow it didn't blow up. So they're like, oh, we'll get EOD out there. I'm like, ah, I can see Apaches. Why don't we just shoot it with 30 millimeter? And they're like, no, right. we can't do that. I'm like, ah, oh, we can't. It's really easy. It's like, I don't know, what, seven bucks a bullet? Like, So uh, we get Air Force EOD up there. It's a senior airman. Thinks he's king shit. And I mean, really, his job's pretty cool. He got, uh, he got to operate a $1.2 million robot. Uh, I know that because he was bragging about it. Oh, yeah. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. Um, so he, he drives a robot up there and just detonates the piss out of it. It's hilarious. Um, I mean, pieces of robot are <laughs> raining down on us. Uh, he's in tears. I'm laughing. Oh, the robot blew up. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh my just, God. <laughs> just blew up. Um, he's in tears. Uh, I'm laughing. He looks at me. He's like, he doesn't know what's so funny. I'm like, cause you just blew up a $1.2 million robot. <laughs> like that's, what's funny. Deuces were out. And so, you know, <laughs> we leave him, uh, never saw him again, obviously. Um, uh, yeah. Continue on, get, do a lot of great stuff. Uh, the last thing I can remember with Levi is we do this huge battalion mission. And uh, this dude is just stone cold. And so, uh, like in all great movements, we're just stopped for hours at a time. Right. And we'd been stopped for however long, you know. And then all of a sudden, one of the trucks, it's probably like 10 trucks ahead of us, just blows up. I mean, just gone. Uh, both individuals end up dying. Um, one of them instantly and one of them back from complications. But that was the... That was the FSO in that truck. And so um, he had begged and pleaded to go on that mission with us. Jeez. And uh, because he never got to leave the wire because he was, I mean, he didn't have a job. Yeah. I'm like, why would you leave the wire? And so uh, he begged and pleaded because he didn't want to go home without being outside the wire with his team. Um, and he was in that truck. Wow. Ended up being an Italian landmine. So uh, once we got moving again, um, we take this 90 degree turn. And as we do, like we just see the side of the road, I don't know, maybe. 25 meters ahead of us is just sparking and flaming up. And so Levi Bates, man, he's driving just crazy. I mean, he just, no emotion, doesn't do anything, puts the truck in reverse and just stomps on it. 
And so, uh, cause you know, we thought, oh, I'm yelling ID, ID. Sure. Um, I thought it was trying to initiate and, uh, like he just stomps on it in reverse. <laughs> and as we're going, like I'm checking the mirror and this dude just like runs forward past us. Right. It's the, EO, it's the Navy EOD guys. So they were, they were pretty slick, but he's like running towards it. Uh, and Levi's just hauling ass in reverse. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, there's a truck coming up. I'm like, Hey, Levi, about 40 meters, 30 meters, 20, 10, 15, five meters, Levi. And he, he don't care. Like he's getting out of the blast zone. And so he sure, hits sure. that truck and the other <laughs> truck, you know, thump, you know, we slam and he just keeps it mashed. Now he's pushing trucks back until he feels <laughs> safe. Uh, and so Jeez. we stop, uh, we stop. He looks at me. He's like, I think we're out of the, we're out of the blast. I'm like, gee, my knees, dude, you are cold blooded. <laughs> uh, it didn't up being, uh, an idea. It's just the, the power lines had fallen. Oh, uh, but okay. like, uh, so, uh, what division did is, uh, they brought me down another, another Romad, um, to get, well, to get other guys some experience and, you know, Levi had, he'd, he never said no to nothing, but, uh, right. he was, he was ready maybe to chill and talk, <laughs> uh, cause, uh, he'd seen enough. Yeah. 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 So, uh, we were in a square back Humvee and everybody else had the slow backs uh, or one, one threes, uh, and we didn't have a gun. Wow. So, you know, Mike Macias comes down, uh, and you know, Mike, did you ever get to meet him? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's a great, uh, this, great guy. <laughs> so this was at the start of his career. Uh, soon after um, his Air Force Academy time had expired. <laughs> um, great dude. Him and I got along. I mean, we're both just bloodthirsty guys. Uh, yeah. So we have a riot. <laughs> um, we go up, and I'm I'm about tired of the vehicles on either side of me blowing up from these IEDs. And so it, it, pretty much apparent, like, I think they're targeting us, yeah. you know, the weird looking Humvee with no gun and all the antennas. Uh, and so the last one that I'd had, it was, we were right behind a one, one, three and the, and the truck behind us got hit. And so Mike's like, what do I do? I'm like, well, uh, we don't have a gun. So let's stay with that. Um, yeah. so we drive up to brigade and they got brand new slope backs with gun turrets. And so we, the greatest brigade, Alo and uh, Rick Reader, I, uh, was our NCIC up there. I'm like, oh, yeah. hey, we're taking one of those trucks. He's like, well, we got to get it cleared. I'm like, hey, Mike, go swap our shit. <laughs> um, so he's like, oh, we're going to need the keys. I'm like, yeah, steal them. I don't care. Right. Uh, so we did. We stole their truck because um, I was I, <laughs> I was tired of driving around on a stupid uh, target, essentially. Yeah. Uh, kill us. Uh, yeah, right. So we steal their truck. Uh, they have a message like, do you guys steal our truck? I'm like, yeah, you can come down here and get it. Uh, you may want to convoy because the roads ain't safe. <laughs> right. like, no, you're good. <laughs> um, so now we have that truck. Uh, Mike's just hilarious. Um, back then you had to do like 12 to 15 page um, targeting packages to strike anything. Well, super lockdown. They weren't letting us do it. Uh, but we, I, that's how I was training Mike, like in talk duties. Um, so he wanted to do, you know, like 24 hour shifts. I'm like, hey, I mean, I don't think it's needed, but cool. Here's how it's going to work. You know, give me a call to all these things. So he was working, you know, we, I'd worked during the day on targeting package. We just had a whole slew of them set in. Um, so I were working together. Uh, our, our, our battalion commander, uh, Colonel Wood was killed. So, um, he comes out, we had two Abrams catastrophic kill on patrols, uh, two separate ones, uh, kind of trying to respond to each other. So we got, you know, we got. You know, six guys definitely that are, are KIA. And so he's rolling out in QRF. And I'm just like, Mike, we ready to go? And Mike was always ready to go. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we're ready. And so we go to get in the truck. And he's like, no, nah, I need you here. I'm like, my QRF isn't going to be the only one out there. I got other patrols still out. So I need you here. I need your eyes everywhere. So we roll mm -hmm. back into the talk. And uh, Colonel Wood uh, gets hit by an IED after he'd got out. They hadn't cleared the area yet. So, um, so we lose him. Um, you know, and just morale just like keeps taking this nerve dive. So sure. Um, after that, that was, uh, they kind of took our leashes off of us. I mean, it wasn't really that restrictive on the ground per se, but when you lose a Lieutenant Colonel, uh, he had a line for Colonel. He never found out. Um, when that happens, they, there's, there's some retribution that goes on and they sure. took like, uh, I think we had 12 approved strikes. And so they just lined us up for days and we just went on this, just this spree. Uh, at the time, uh, Geraldo Riviera was embedded with our battalion and everybody hated him. <laughs> really? And so, yeah, yeah. So he goes out and so we decide we're going to go out to an OP so we can actually do some type ones um, just because. Yeah. Probably probably not a good decision, but we're going to do it. So we have a rover and everything out there and we're, we're on this rooftop. And I had told everybody, like, like, he can't come up here. And we called him Geraldo because he hated it. It's like, Geraldo can't <laughs> come up here because I got this rover on. He's not putting it on TV and he has a history of putting shit on TV that doesn't need to be there. Oh, yeah. And so they're like, yeah, 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 cool, cool. Um, so 
we got the rover up and going and I can hear like commotion coming up these stairs and like I run by it back and look over and her is coming up and like Mike throw him off the roof. Uh, and, um, you know, Mike's a big dude. Yeah. He's not tall, but I mean, he's stocky. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Throw him <laughs> off. He knows he's not supposed to be up here. Like let, let his camera and get a film of that. So Mike goes after him. <laughs> so, uh, the camera is trying to run interference. Mike can't get a hold of him. Like, yes, yes, this is going to happen. Like, <laughs> he's going off the hard yeah. way and the battalion commander gets up and he's like, what if, you know, the, the interim that ends up spending the rest of the time. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, dude, shouldn't be up here. And he's like, Mike, stop. <laughs> I'm like, no, Mike, don't. And he's like, Mike, I am a Lieutenant Colonel. You stop. Mike's like, no, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So he goes scuttling <laughs> him off and we, we do our thing. It's like, yeah, that was pretty good. That'd have been awesome. And then, you know, fast forward now, Mike has done amazing things in this. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, love it. Love it. Um, but yeah, so I think that's, yeah, I'll probably sum up like that first one. Tons of drops. Um, you know, if if you got, if those aircraft got assigned to Advance 4-5, like they were dropping bombs. It was great. Uh, yeah. I was one of the only JTACs in the division dropping bombs. Um, except for one time, I pop over to 3-3 ACR's talk, and uh, I'm going to cover down while they're on their infill, jammed up. Right. And so the Apache see some guys digging IEDs in, they engage them, they run into this house, you know, um, Basically, it was like a clown car house, like just dozens and dozens of people start flooding out of this thing. And the Apaches recognize the guys. And so, you know, they start chasing them down and, and F-15s check on for some odd reason. Maybe I called them, maybe I didn't. I can't remember to this day. Sure. And they're like, hey, we got targets inside. I'm like, no, no, you don't. You know, and I'm trying to talk to them. Right. And the major, the XO is in the talk with us and he's calling up to the commander and he was like, hey, we got all these guys in sight, you know, looking for your approval to kill them. I'm like, no, I'm not like at all. <laughs> and uh, there's a speaker on FM on command and the commander's like, we are two weeks away from the initial elections in this country. Under no way, shape or form, are you allowed to drop bombs on my objective? <laughs> and uh, not in jest, the major, the XO turns to me and he goes, he said, kill them all. I'm like, no, he didn't. And I'm in yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so meanwhile, like, as all this is going on, the F-15s are like, we're in from the south looking for clearance. And I'm like, aboard, aboard, aboard. Like, it's just a nightmare, right? And so the Apaches go clean it up. And like, I, you know, I end up keeping anything being from you and being dropped on the objective. But that F-15 squadron was calling me like the Mother Teresa of all JTACs. <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I got thousands and thousands of pounds of munitions dropped on this deployment, you know, in combat, in the talk, like everything. And now I'm the Mother Teresa of all JTACs. <laughs>